How to Become Truly Catholic, Official Publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in Exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the proper doctrine of conversion from heresy and acceptance into the Roman Catholic Church, which is nothing less, such an conversion of a heretic and or an infidel etc., but the supernatural gift of God. January 4, 2024 Anno Domini So then, uh, uh, in a, the, first the true Code of Canon Law is a 1917 code, that's the, what the Church uses, what the Novus Ordo sect they installed is not Catholic, and the Novus Ordo sect is just what it is, it's just a non-Catholic sect that lacks any authority in the Church and any jurisdiction, and moreover does not possess any apostolic continuity and succession as it is, so there's no clerical office in that sect, there's no papacy, there's no authority, there's no jurisdiction, nothing. It's just they're using the name of Catholic to deceive and to drive people to hell, to truly to serve their master, the devil. So the 1917 Code of Canon Law speaks thus in Canon 1258, that's right here, it is unlawful for the faithful to assist in any active manner or to take part in the sacred services of non-Catholics. Merely passive material presence may be tolerated on account of a civil office or for the purpose of showing respect to persons to be approved in doubtful cases by the bishop for grave reasons at funerals of non-Catholics at their marriages and similar solemnities, provided, that's very important, provided there is danger of neither perversion nor scandal. Why is it important that this is published today? Because we have non-Catholic sect, which is called Novus Ordo, New Order. We don't have New Order in the church. They are excommunicated apostates. It's a non-Catholic sect that uses the name of Catholic. And so it is absolutely forbidden by those who truly want to save their soul to be present at anything that this sect does, including showing up dressed as priests and going into their so-called churches which are desecrated if it's like old churches that belong to the church and was stolen by the sect including that of the vatican and so forth or all the major basilicas they are all desecrated by non-catholic rituals that took place as a protestant reenactment of the last supper that god hates it's not the reenactment but it's supposed to be the holy sacrifice of the mass reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of calvary and so those who attend such ceremonies are guilty of violating this canon uh, 458 because, and moreover, it's a sacrilegious attempt on their part to be part of something that is not Catholic, that's displeasing to God, that God hates and force this abomination to be present in such a ceremony, or anything that the sect does in terms of presenting itself like uh, in a religious sense. Uh, so that includes even their ceremonies at funerals and so forth because it's full of abomination we have just to sidetrack a little bit we have seen even and during our pilgrimage in europe uh, in certain places we observe, observe they are even capable of burning a urn of burn ashes uh, of, a, of a deceased person uh, and, and call it ceremony which is thoroughly to, to, to be burned to be cremated this cremation is forbidden forbidden by a canon law also why because of the resurrection and so forth so it's it's uh, it's there's there's so much in this so many other things uh, another canon law is right here uh, that's it is not sufficient to avoid heretical error but also all those errors which more or less approach heresy Wherefore, all constitutions and decrees by which the Holy See has condemned and prohibited such false opinions must be observed Canon 1324. Again, 1917, Code of Canon Law. Uh, then, uh, there is uh, those things that are more or less important, like this. For example, this canon law, canon 2319, uh, and that's the bottom part, it will quote, Catholic parents or those who take the place of the parents who knowingly have their children brought up or instructed in a non-Catholic persuasion 
they are excommunicated, reserved to the ordinary. Today we don't have ordinary, they are excommunicated by the very fact that they teach, they teach their children non-Catholic religion, or they'll allow somebody else to teach them. That means if you send your children into the Novosoros sect or to the heretics that recognize this sect, then you are guilty of violating this canon. That's, that's excommunication, as it is. So the judgment reserved, at this point, reserved to our judgment as the rightful so implanted. So be careful where you go, where you send your children. There is also the danger which we are, there's a certain knowledge that we do possess, like the heretics of society in past the tent, they allowing the novels or the sectarians to bring their children into their so-called schools and to be part of the, their education. So the manners of the novels or the sect are tolerated uh, and evidently purposely so by these uh, SSPX heretics and so forth. We are not aware of uh, any other approach on order does it, but uh, this is notorious and on part of the SSPX and other such like things. We have this, this just simply those people continue to go to no sort of sect. They just uh, pay the tuition and uh, and uh, allow their children to go there and to obtain the SSPX education, but it's still Novosoto oriented and so forth, tolerated. And so it's, it's horrifying, it's terrifying what these people uh, are doing. This is another very important canon, canon 731. It is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith and ask for them, unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. So, why is it this? Why is this important? It is important because uh, the church is not permitting deviances from the law that the church established, which is canon law and the constitutions, apostolic constitutions, and prohibitions of the church, and so forth. So, if anyone decides to transgress them, they are already outside the church as violating the authority that instituted these prohibitions or constraints and so forth. That means disregarding the authority of God that is invested in the church. That means our authority as it is at present, at present time as the rightful and true sovereign pontiff and the supreme legislator of the church. This is another canon right here, canon 1118 regarding marriage. The valid marriage of Christian consummated by the conjugal act cannot be dissolved by any human authority for any reason. That alone can dissolve the bond. And so forth. Um, we wanted to speak on the subject more clearly as it is. Because marriage is only valid when, uh, as, a, uh, and as a sacrament. It is, and that's been really truly shown in the in the canon law as it is regarding marriage. It's a very important subject. We should record another uh, recording on this subject alone because there's so many things in there, so many aspects. But it can only be uh, valid as a sacrament inside the church. That means if people decide to get married uh, in these fraudulent or illegitimate orders, those people are not only, they don't have valid ordinations because they perverted the whole form they're using in 1962 invalid. Uh, Pontifical Romanum that was uh, put in place by the enemy of the church and by then still valid Pope and once, once he did that he lost the papacy that was John 23rd on Joe Roncalli with communist connections he had uh, so then uh, they perverted they using the 1962 missile which Roncalli has to do afterwards which is invalid so that's prohibited and it contains errors in it like Roncalli added St. Joseph to the canon of the Mass. That invalidates, as a defect of intention, it invalidates the priesthood. Moreover, the 1988 Episcopal Consecration, which they used in Econ Switzerland, this SPX, and from them emanates all these so called orders, more or less, uh, including some of these sort of contests. Uh, that was, they used in 1962 invalid Episcopal consecration, which is including that fraudulent and that, and that perversion, the, um, the Pontificar Romanum that uh, Roncalli put in place in 1961-62, and so, um, which contains heresy and, and joy denial of the, uh, of the 
constraints, which is uh, that the sacrament of holy orders can only be administered once in the sense of what that ceremony is. That means priesthood only once and and Episcopal consecration, so it cannot be repeated as it is, which they do in the Episcopal consecration. We have uh, by laying hands three times in turn of those three bishops that are present, which in the case of 1988, these, uh, this Episcopal consecration ceremony was done. They had two bishops, Archbishop uh, Marcel Lafayette, notorious heretic by then, and another notorious heretic, uh, Bishop de Castro Meyer, so they took turn as visible in the footage that they recorded. We have included this many times in our video, our publications, so there's no need to go into more details. That is the matter of that sacrament, and they, they by doing that, they truly telling God that they don't trust that first consecration, they're doing it again, and the person has to say, I see the Spirit of the Son, receive the Holy Ghost. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a, the, the essential part of that ceremony of that rite, R-I-T-E, which they violated, so that cannot be repeated precisely for that reason that makes it invalid, because that's the defect of intention of part of them. They're using new right that was not approved by the church. By that fact that they accepted this change, they excommunicated themselves from the church by becoming heretics, because that's not what the church does. And it violates the constraints of Council of Trent, Session 7, Canon 13. Not even the Pope has the authority to change the sacraments. The essential parts, that means substantially change the sacraments. So, in regards to marriages, that follows from this, and it's included in that, the principle stands that in regards to marriages, these people have no authority to, to, uh, to do marriages, to have the ceremony as it is. It's invalid on that principle that these are not true pastors of the church. They don't have that faculty from the church. So that means that those people, there's sort of agreement is, exists, but it's not a sacrament. It's not a, a nuptial blessing. Valid. It's not valid. These people are not priests based on those constraints and that those defects that they contracted during the very virtually during their uh, attempted ordinations, which are invalid. We have documented this in our publications how they did have desecrated churches or not properly consecrated churches. Uh, they're using the 1962 Pontificum Romanum, this, for example, the SSPX heretics, and so that invalidates the whole thing because that's changed that that ceremony has been changed by these enemies like Roncalli and so there's no valid marriage it is so serious as it is moreover that's the teaching of the church uh, heretics cannot come for grace in the sacraments uh, so this is another important canon canon uh, the one in yellow that's a uh, on 1325 it's got three sections but the one in the all the faithful and conscience obliged to profess their faith publicly whenever their silence of the food or a manner of acting imports an implicit denial of their faith a contempt of religion or an insult to god or scandal to the neighbor then uh, on the bottom it's uh, the the catholics shall not enter into any dispute or conferences with non-catholics especially public ones, without permission of the Holy See, or in urgent case of the ordinary. Uh, then it comes this other constraint. This is, this is from the Holy Scripture, but it's a constraint that the Church follows as it is. This is from Leviticus 19, and uh, it's, uh, we just recently guided because we were looking for uh, the... Uh, the, the copy that we had on the screenshot and we couldn't find it for some reason so it's 1928 and for the debt Leviticus 1928 and for that for the debt you shall not cut your flesh neither shall you make in yourselves any figures or marks I do Lord that means there's no possibility of having any tattoos or earrings and and, and so forth as Catholic so those who have obtained and such and we have seen this during our pilgrimage uh, visiting and uh, on our inspection in incognito obviously we have seen this uh, even among the SSPX so-called parishioners uh, with the tattoos they permitting people who have visibly on their forearms and so forth 
that used to attend and able to go to obtain the, the host, uh, which is not wholly convenient because of those defects that are present. These are actually people who are enemies of the church. But still, it's in their will and it causes scandal as it is. On the other hand, and most importantly, the church, the Holy Mother Church, does not permit people with tattoos to enter the church as it is. Not only that, we don't accept as members people who violate it because that's a heresy. Violate this constraint of the Holy Scripture, that's a heresy. Leviticus 19.28. So, um, it's, it's impossible to tolerate any of this and there was always the constraint of the of the faith as it is the church never permitted people who had had that used to be present as it is um, because because that's why all so that's the law of God so uh, there's no possibility of compromise as it is so obviously when uh, people attempt to become Shui Catholic, they have to make sure that they also follow uh, the constraints of the church and the law of the church. Like, for example, this canon 8, 855, notoriously, notoriously unworthy Catholics such as those excommunicated, interdicted, or of public bad repute must not be admitted to Holy Communion until after their repentance and amendment is known and satisfaction has been made for public scandal. Occult sinners who secretly ask for Holy Communion should be refused by the priest if he knows that they have not amended. If, however, they ask publicly and the priest cannot pass them over without scandal, he may give them Holy Communion. This is, this is just a concern, uh, constraint in times past as it is. Today, they will be refused completely because we have non-Catholic sect that claims to be Catholic, uses the name of Catholic, that people are so perverted in that sect that it's impossible to admit them as they are into any communion as it is with the church. So there's, there's no possibility of them being admitted. Moreover, it is important that the abjuration of heresy is made, which means that that abjuration has to be done according as the church has always done. We don't have any additional uh, leeway as it is because then anything would be permitted and uh, that's not possible to be tolerated as it is. So when we speak about the abjuration of heresy, we are looking for that screenshot of the abjuration itself. Um, It is, it is important that, uh, that people realize that there is there's only certain um, permissions that could be tolerated, but not that that would be that people would be permitted to enter the church without them renouncing those errors that prevented their membership in a church. That means that they have to first make sure that these things are uh, taken care of and the church insists on this. So that means all those obstacles that, um, that exist in, uh, in regards to their belief or their conduct or morality and such like constraints, they have to be uh, eliminated or otherwise, uh, there's there's no there's no possibility of ad, uh, them admitted being admitted into the church. And uh, so um, we have found the uh, the pages as it is. So this is. Uh, this is what it looks like in the Pontificar and the Ritual Romanum, and um, then uh, this is the next page right here, and that has to be signed. So that's truly the abjuration of heresy it's in in English. So that's uh, and uh, upon the conversion of those who truly want to be Catholic, we will uh, make sure that they receive this and they have to sign it. We have to sign it 
and then they will become rightful members of the church. But otherwise there's no possibility. It's impossible to admit somebody with those defects. Moreover, they have to study the Catechism. That means Catechism of the Council of Trent. And if that is not done, then obviously, and the best translation of the, of the Catechism is uh, that of uh, Father Donovan. Uh, let's see if we can find that. The, the, the pictures as it is. Um, of that, it's a it's an old translation, but it's not here. we have the book itself too. But it's uh, it's more uh, like this, for example, right here. Um, from Father Donovan, there are several versions that that uh, are on the internet. But uh, an acceptable, or we can send the, the, the copy of it, the, the digital copy on request if there, that uh, applicant is uh, worthy of our, our help and is sincere. Most important part is this, to be sincere in front of God. To truly, if someone wants to be truly Catholic, we understand the difficulty that people do not understand how is it possible that we are truly the sovereign pontiff. How is it possible that somebody like this claims uh, the papacy and where is the election and so forth, that they don't realize through the supernatural character of that what took place? That God permitted this first and foremost for the sin, as a punishment of sin. That's nothing less than the third secret of Fatima in life. But that, humanly speaking, they have to realize that, humanly speaking, the election of the Pope is impossible because there are no more true cardinals. Then we have the difficulty with the Sidivacontus heretics, who are truly heretics, and who negate the truth that uh, when our Lord says to St. Peter, the first pope, he says, the Lord Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to thee, Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. They don't realize that the keys are not physical keys, but the, the guidance of the Holy Ghost, the guidance from God that exists. That means when our Lord says, I will give, give to thee the keys, that means they transfer from a, a, into successor and successor and so forth. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. That means that our Lord, if, if there was no successor, that means the keys would not be possible to be used because our Lord says, I will give to thee, not to you as, as many, but to thee. That means that the successor has to be, and the law of the church has to be followed. What is the law of the church? 18 days. Cardinals have uh, the duty to assemble and start voting for the new pope if the old pope dies. In this case, there was no such possibility because they all gave consent what Roncalli did in 1962, how he published the Pontifica, New Pontifical Romanum, which is invalid. Because, again, it violates what the Church has always done, and in such a sacred way, and violates the, the constraints of the Council of Trent. On the sacraments, Roncalli instituted a new right that is invalid. So he made himself a heretic, he lost the papacy because he became heretic, because heretics cannot possess and do not possess the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That means if that was possible, then the devil would be in charge of that, of those keys. Obviously, that's impossible. I will not grant them. God does not grant that to people who are his enemies. So when people don't realize that this is the constraint that exists and that, that there's no way that, uh, humanly speaking, the church continued and that people like his so-called successor, successor of Roncalli, Montini, that there's no way that he was a pope. There's, uh, he was not a pope. It was just a bad monsignor excommunicated who allowed six Protestant ministers to institute the new uh, ceremony, which is not a mass, because that's a, that's a Luther's ceremony of Luther, of the arch heretic, and it's a reenactment of the Last Supper, and it's a Protestant heresy, and idolatry, because those people, when they had the minute, then they showed them the, the table, the Last Supper, then and facing the people, 
that's how they show them the intention to show them the Last Supper, but that's not the sacrifice to God. Because the true sacrifice to God is a reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary. And the priest has to face the altar, he has to be truly priest, and has to say the, 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 the Mass according to the rubrics that the Church approved, which means the Missal of 1962, Anno Domini, is invalid. Because by then, Roncalli attacked the Sacrament of Holy Orders and lost the papacy. That means the Episcopal Consecration Ceremony. And these heretics, including the Servicantes, they go to useless examination of what was never counsel of the Church. It was only a second Vatican gathering of heretics, because by then they all gave consent to what Roncalli did to the sacraments. But the devil, who is their master, desired first the sacraments to be perverted so that he could cripple the, the the um, he could cripple Troy, the church in terms of the supernatural power that the church possessed, which includes the episcopal power and priesthood, and that's what they wanted to obtain because they are these enemies are guided by Satan, by the devil himself, and so that's why it's so important to watch over these things. None of these heretics teach this properly. None of these heretics go into that that these. This, what they have done, what Roncalli did to the Sacrament of Holy Orders, the Episcopal Consecration Ceremony, was the essential attack against the Holy Mother Church. That crippled the whole thing. They severed themselves immediately from the unity of the Church because they co gave consent, even by their silence, even those who were present. And then they assembled with that evildoer, that enemy of the Church, Roncalli, into invalid and null, gathering which was never the council of the church because by then they all became heretics and blinded and deaf and they just continued their evils changing step by step gradually the doctrines and the laws and the, the liturgical uh, laws and so forth introducing new things slowly and systematically until they perverted entire nations and millions and millions of souls are today in hell because of that acceptance. And we have warned about this in our recordings. How is it possible that we have this understanding? Again, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, which we do possess, they are the proof of it. Because otherwise we would be saying what the heretics are saying. And they are saying they are going into, they read publications of people like Wojtyla, who was never valid Pope. He was just a bad bishop, excommunicated apostate, who, among other things, uh, committed public act of apostasy, kissing Muslim Quran, and so forth. What else he has done? And the gatherings of heresy if they, uh, in Assisi, and uh, and these kind of things. And not only that, that Wojtyla was able to come and go back and forth from communist Poland, when the pre priests, the, the true priests, were uh, were chased back and forth, back and forth by the communists. It was a horrible civil war in Poland in 1949. Wojtyla was allowed to go back and forth to Rome and back and so forth. So he was one of theirs. And what scandals he caused. He's paying for it in hell, including also his predecessor, so-called predecessor Montini, who had known uh, contacts with, with Moscow, with Kremlin. I mean, it's Khrushchev and, and, and KVD or KGB by then and, and so forth. Uh, and Roncalli, also known communist connections. So this is not some small matter, this is orchestrated attack against the church. That's why today this Holy Apostolic See, the true Holy Apostolic See, is in exile. Outside Rome, as was foretold, and this is written in the Holy Scripture. Uh, it's in two places, our Lord mentions it. Wheresoever the body shall be, thither shall the eagles also be gathered together. Only those who are helped by God to recover themselves from the tyranny of the devil, from this snare, from this blindness, and being deaf to the truth, only those who are truly sincere in front of God, they will be helped to understand this, our doctrine, which is in follow the doctrine, and leads to salvation. Because then they will avoid all these people, all these heretics. Because it is impossible to be associated with people who are enemies of the church and uh, there's, there's just simply no way to be associated
with them in any way whatsoever. This is visible, it is unlawful for the people to assist in any active manner and so forth. Uh, it, and there are other constraints of the canon law that do not permit, like, like this one, Canon 731, is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics. And then on, on the bottom part, 732, that's what we were talking about, the sacrament of, the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and orders, which imprint a character, cannot be received a second time. These are the situations that we have warned about over the years. And we're speaking about several years, 18 plus years in our capacity to warn a divinely granted and given capacity and office to warn people about this situation to warn them not to have anything to do with heretics to stay away from them because otherwise they will be if so facto by the very fact excommunicated and reserved to our judgment as it is that what we have obtained from god and how we have obtained our Episcopal consecration, we have documented and we have spoken about in our previous recordings. So we don't need to enlarge on this, especially in this uh, live stream as it is, because we don't want to make it any longer. And, uh, and previous live streams were sabotaged previously. Uh, we had difficulty just to transmit and so forth. So, but uh, God Himself, as He has spoken about the supernatural protection. God does things in supernatural way. He doesn't do things the human way because that's human. That's the creature. God is the creator. So he permitted this to happen to the mankind in punishment of that immorality, wickedness, godlessness, denial of his church, the authority of the church, and already what was taking place. That goes all the way back to the end of World War II. And even before that, that's why World War II happened. As a punishment, as a, as a warning to the mankind that this will continue to happen until mankind changes. And God foreseeing that uh, the world is turning into a zestful of iniquity as it is today, horrifying zestful of iniquity. And that uh, people think that they just simply can uh, continue their bad lives and offending God and not seeking the truth of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. To become truly Catholic, to be reconciled with the church, to be in the, admitted into the church for the sake of their soul, to protect themselves from, uh, from the tyranny of the devil, truly from the sin, to be absolved in the sacrament of, in true sacrament of penance. And so God didn't need to protect all these heretics. God didn't need to protect any such promise. He only needed to protect one thing, that's the papacy. And that's what he did. Because if there was no, no true possessor of the keys to the kingdom of heaven, then there would be no papacy, there would be no church anymore left, visible church as it is. And that's why I said if contism is heresy, the seat of St. Peter is not vacant and has not been vacant, except that God has not revealed who the true Son Pontiff is. But the link is not broken and has not been broken except the mankind is deprived of the knowledge or understanding or that grace of believing it but humanly speaking as we have said before the election of the pope is impossible there's no true cardinals cardinals are named by the pope has to be truly named by a true pope so since the sect assembled and started naming people and calling them cardinals doesn't mean that they are cardinals that they are not cardinals Moreover, Canon 188 for number, for number four severs people from their archaic offices. And these people these people have not obtained their archaic offices in the first place. By what virtue? There's no, no such thing. Because they don't belong in the church. So they are automatically, if so facto, excommunicated because they are heretics and apostates, apostate sect. And those who acknowledge this sect are also excommunicated by that Canon 2314. And 
that they don't possess any clerical offices. They never acquired their clerical offices in the first place. Those that had them, they lost them because they remained silent when Roncalli started changing the sacraments, including the sacrament of Holy Orders, the Episcopal Consecration. And when they remained silent, that's how they ceased to be in possession of their office. It's called tacit, res tacit resignation. It is ipso facto, that means by the very fact, it is ipso jure by, by the force of law, and it is sine qua declaratione, without any declaration. That's the protection of the Holy Ghost in the Church. If a cleric becomes heretic, he loses automatically the cleric office, because then he negates willfully the guidance of the Holy Ghost that guides him otherwise to reject that heresy and to warn others by the duty of his cleric office that that's a heresy. And Roncalli started attacking the sacrament of holy orders, and made the change, that's how he ceased to be the Pope, because not even the Pope, that's Council of Trent, Session 7, Canon 13. It says every pastor of the churches, when changes, when he uh, changes the receiving and approved rights of the church that are used in the sacraments into other new ones, let him be anathema, that means cursed and excommunicated. From Kali excommunicated himself because he introduced new right of episcopal consecration. And obviously the Pontificar Romanum, there are some other changes in that that are visibly act of an enemy, just defect of intention as it is, and the intention of their uh, introducing such project publication, the Pontificar Romanum, is to destroy the church. So obviously that's invalid as it is and it contains heretical uh, falsehood in the sacrament of holy orders that's how, how essential it is because they virtually telling god that they don't believe that the first imposition of hands of the one first bishop of the, the, uh, the principal consecrator is uh, is binding or that it is what is uh, is giving the what is called indelible character that God, on that account, by pronouncing the form and laying hands on top of the head of that bishop elect, which is the matter of that sacrament, from vile, vile bishop, uh, and the form is Asipa Spiritum Sanctum, received the Holy Ghost, that they saying that they don't believe it. That's a sacrilege in front of God because they repeating it, and again repeating it because they are three prescribed. In the true form, they have to do it all together and precisely for that spe special reason. That's why it says the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and orders which imprint a character cannot be received a second time. So the church is protected. Those who deny it, those who negate it, those who obstinately refuse to believe this, then they are on their own outside the church. They denying the authority that the church has to make these constraints and protections of the faith and the sacraments. And because they don't understand these people that the devil himself wants to destroy the supernatural first and then the doctrine that leads to heresy and heresy and heresy. Then they don't understand that the first and foremost they have to attack the sacraments in order to cripple the church and sever the guidance of the Holy Ghost from themselves and from those who follow their bad example, evil deeds. So for those who watch this, we will, con we will conclude this. Um, God will punish this world as it is, and that's already coming. That means thorough godlessness, the time of the Antichrist, three and a half years of darkness, of evil, uh, of uh, injustice, tyranny, terror, wars, and so forth. But the Church, the true Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is divine institution. And because of that promise, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Church of our Lord, of Christ our Lord. There's no possibility that the church will be destroyed. And the only safety there is, first and foremost, of your soul, is to become truly Catholic. And to be truly Catholic, that means you have to be reconciled with the church. You have to be admitted from heresy. You have to make abjuration to make sure that there's no obstacle to you being admitted. That means you have to study catechism, catechism of the Council of Trent, most importantly, and be examined by the church, that means by us, and to 
be absolved of your sins, to be conditionally baptized if that needs to be done. And most of the time, yes, that needs to be done. If you come from the Novus Ordo sect, that sect cannot be trusted. So yes, we want, we, don't make, we want to make sure that you truly receive the sacrament of baptism. So it's conditional baptism. It's a very short ceremony, but it needs to be done in person. And we will not communicate with people who are insincere and do not want to help the church as is the precept of the church. Which means the church, yes, we are in need of help as it is. But God is helping us and he is with his church. But then it is truly difficult times for the Holy Mother Church. But those who will understand this and will be helped by God by a true miracle, that's a true miracle, conversion from heresy, it is a truly a miracle of God and a gift of God. They will be required to be truly Catholic. That means, as our Lord says in another place, every tree that beareth not good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. And those who do not produce those good fruits and help, help the church to continue out of charity for their fellow man to, so others can convert and amend and be absolved and admitted into the church for the sake of sacrament, to be present in our mass and so forth. That's a lack of charity. If they negate some, such such duty as it is they have to God, then they will have to pay for it to our Lord. And it will be very painful because the time of punishment is coming. This should suffice today. We are a little bit long and uh, God is helping to continue and all this is happening around us is sort of uh, difficult to uh, to speak about, but we will endure all those difficulties. The devil is doing his everything possible to destroy the church. So, but God protected the papacy because that's his promise. That's where the church continues, even if it was just we are by ourselves. That's it. God will continue helping us. We know that by years and years of experience that God always helped us, even in miraculous way, in times and situations that were life threatening. So we are not speaking without proper knowledge and understanding. So therefore, those who will be will decide to be truly Catholic, we will help them out of, uh, by the grace of God and our duty towards our apostolic office, and we have, grant them our apostolic blessing for that purpose of their conversion. And also, will not they will have to learn from God the price of it and the consequences that He He Himself has in His hand. That should suffice today.